Ladies and gents, I'm here with a special guest today. This is Steve Janis, and I've had the pleasure of running into this gent actually through our little children who know each other. But what I'm super excited about with us in our nuclear unit right now is that Steve actually has quite a unique experience in two different areas that relates to nuclear engineering and everything. So Steve, thank you so much for your time today and kind of shedding light on your path of where you are and some of the things you've done. I think this is really gonna paint a great picture for our students of some of the opportunities with a background in chemistry and a background in the nuclear world. So thanks again for coming. Absolutely, thank you for having me, Phil. I'm very excited to be able to speak to your students and share my experiences with them. A uh, little background on myself. Please. Um, I went to the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. I have a degree, a Bachelor's of Science in Nuclear Engineering. And right after school, uh, I started my, my career uh, in nuclear power industry. Um, I have recently had a bit of a career change into the, uh, let's say, the defense side as well as uh, the NASA side. So I'm supporting Department of Defense as well as NASA um, working with the Los Animals National Laboratory. Awesome. Thank you. And that we've, uh, we've talked about in class already, Los Alamos, some of the first testings and the relation to Manhattan Project. So as far as history in that, what a cool place to be involved with already. So I know you went to U of I in that, and we, we recently talked before we started recording, but I know you've recently switched careers, but mm -hmm. still uh, related to the nuclear world. Can we talk about your previous work? I know you worked as, with nuclear engineering and with some power plants. Could, we, could you kind of go into like what your job was and maybe like a day in the life of that and maybe something specific that you've worked on so we could just get a kind of a clear idea of what your job looked like a little bit. Sure, absolutely, yeah. So um, <clears throat> obviously when you start any career, you start kind of at the, the bottom rung and you work your way up through it. Um, so as you get higher and higher and more experience, you get more and more responsibility. Um, so I, I did indeed work in the nuclear power industry uh, for 12 plus years. That was right out of college until this past February. And <clears throat> the company I worked for was called Sargent and Lundy, and they had been in the power industry for over 120 years, um, specifically supporting uh, nuclear power plants as well as fossil plants and other renewables. But the, the biggest the biggest customers that they had were nuclear power. And so my particular customer uh, was Exelon. Um, many of you may have heard of Exelon. ComEd is a subsidiary. ComEd distributes the electricity while Exelon creates the electricity. So my experience with nuclear power plants is with what, what we call design engineering. So you would do, you would design a system, a component, whatever, and you would integrate it into the power plant and support it with calculations, uh, documentation, et cetera. And obviously you have many different groups to do these different things. And um, you know, if you wanted to buy like a pump, for example, you would go to a, someone that makes pumps. We wouldn't necessarily go and try to fabricate our own pump. That's something that's, you know, you, you know your lane, know your customer, know your expertise. Um, so I, I had, we worked downtown Chicago, and a typical day in my life is, you know, I'd get in and I would have a slew of emails and or phone calls from my customers, my clients. Um, but really day to day life was just like any other type office type job, um, except it revolved around nuclear power, which is a little more specialized. Um, you know, it's highly regulated by the federal government. And we would typically um, have meetings with our customers you know they would the way the process would start was they would come to us with a with a with a problem with a request for proposal saying hey we have an issue with this pump let's say whatever it is we want to replace it we want to upgrade it with a new one can you guys do the engineering and design for us and you know we'll purchase the pump we'll we'll install it we'll do all the we'll do all the physical work but we need you guys to give us the engineering and the design for it projects could typically last from weeks two years. Um, the last project I had was a multi-year project, multi-million dollars, and it was to install a, <clears throat> a brand new a feed water system. So this is the, the, the part of a, yeah, this is what shoots the water into the reactor core to create the steam and then spin the turbine to create the power. The issue that the plant was having was they would not be able to um, avoid a down power or a reactor trip if one of their existing pumps failed. So if one of their pumps went down, the whole unit would have to go down. And they didn't want to do that because it's a lot of money. It's about a million dollars a day in, in, in revenue to operate one unit. So it was a big loss for them. So they were willing to spend a lot of money to do this. 
Um, and that was an exciting project. It was very challenging, um, but very rewarding as well. I had it from start to finish. I saw the whole process. It was my biggest project that I had had. So I was glad to be able to have that before uh, my career change uh, into what, uh, what I'm doing now. Wow. So when you're doing this and they come with a problem, are you kind of the, the man in the middle? Like you're talking to the company that has feed water systems. You're talking to the plant. You're also talking about installation. How can we do it as quick as possible, as safe as possible so that we save money and we do it efficiently? So are you kind of like the big picture and pulling all the pieces together to make sure it happens and then do you deliver like that plan to the company? Like this is what we suggest is the best option. Yes, that's exactly right. And then if they say, yep, yeah, that's what we want. That's how we want to do it. Go ahead. We're going to checks in the mail. We're going to turn you guys on, start doing your work. Awesome. And that's typically how it would, how it would go is we were the, the, the go between. So we would have the customer on one side, we would have the vendors and the equipment suppliers on the other side. You'd have, you know, the other specialty groups like, like reactor vendors and things like that. And we're the ones kind of coordinating, communicating everything with them. But then ultimately, at the end of the day, we take all their bits and pieces and put it into one design package that says, here are all your calculations, here are all your drawings, here's all your piping, here are your pumps, all this stuff. Here are your installation instructions. And that goes to them, and then they ultimately install it. Uh, and during the installation phase, they inevitably have questions, and they say, hey, we want to make a little change here, a little change there. Is that okay? Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a soup to nuts type thing. It's very start to finish. It's from the very, very beginning of, you know, here's what we're thinking we want to do, all the way to the end of when it gets tested and turned over to the plant for operation. What a cool, rewarding thing. You're, you're helping create power we know that has very low, no emissions, right? But also, I can imagine everything you learned in college when you were on the job, did you feel like every problem solving experience you did, did you continue to learn even more and more about nuclear? Was this a job that you were constantly learning just because you talked to a new vendor or you had a new experience in that? Certainly, absolutely. And I, I, I would say I learned more um, practicum on the job and more theory and application in school. Um, I would say being so. Doing nuclear engineering in school is very much geared toward reactor design and things like that, which is not what I was really hoping to get into. I was, my, 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 my specialty that I chose in school was for power plants. So yeah, I got the whole big picture of how they work, how they operate, and how they do everything, but we didn't get into any sort of like, here's how you size pipe, here's how you correct the right material, here's right. how you size a pump to make sure it delivers the right flow. Um, that was all on the job type stuff. So while I learned a tremendous amount in school, yes, absolutely. And it was really I think the biggest benefit was going to an engineering college. It trains you and teaches you how to think like an engineer, how to think like a problem solver, which can be applied to not just engineering fields, but all, all over the place. And one of the things that um, my, my sister's uh, an attorney, she's a lawyer. And one of the things that she was telling me, and I learned from a lot of other people is that Law schools love engineering students or engineering grads because they already have that thought process of thinking logically and thinking through the problem. Um, so it, it, when engineers do get into law, typically they get into like um, uh, like patent law or something like that mm -hmm. because it's, it's highly technical. Yeah, that's a great point. And I'm really glad you brought that up. When we go to college, we get that general foundation idea. But I think any job, you really learn so much from, like you said, the practical application, the everyday life, teachers included, right? We, I studied to be a science teacher, but until I got in that classroom, that's when you really, really learn the stuff. So right. I think that's great to uh, remind people because sometimes when we get right out of school, we feel a little overwhelmed, like we aren't completely prepared, but I don't know if anyone is completely prepared for everything ever. So I, I, I really for sure that up. So, well, th that job sounds cool. What a cool way to problem solve, constant challenges and communication. I think that is, sums up engineering so well. So thank you for bringing that part up in the nuclear world. Now, it's how exciting you've kind of switched recently into a new area. Would you be able and willing to talk a little bit more? You mentioned that you were with the Department of Defense and NASA working with them. Could we go into that a little bit? What does that entail? Absolutely, of course. So, and I'll say I was, when I was approached by this engineering firm, I was, and I found out what exactly they're doing, I was very excited about it because this was something, when I was in school, this is something that I really wanted to get into. I had 
a, an interest in defense and a an extreme interest in in space. And it wasn't until I was in school that I developed this this uh, passion for space. And I, I thought to myself, boy, if I could do it all over again, I might do like astrophysics or something like that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm still happy I did engineering. So <clears throat> so I'm I'm working for a new company that works with a lot of government agencies. And in this particular instance, it's with the Los Alamos National Laboratory. And the mission of Los Alamos is to provide plutonium for nuclear weapons to support national defense, as well as plutonium for thermoelectric generators for space exploration. So for satellites, for space probes, um, they run on nuclear power. And a lot of people don't necessarily know that until you talk about it. But yeah, they run on nuclear energy. Uh, so in this particular job, I'm kind of shifted away a little bit from the nitty-gritty engineering type things and more into um, uh, project type roles. So project engineering, project management, like, it's like a ma ma project management role, which was my ultimate end goal here. Was I, I know I didn't want to do this design engineering more of my whole career. I wanted to eventually get into project management and <clears throat> you know leverage my experience with doing all this, this work to be able to then run projects and say, here, now I can help you customer directly rather than have, you know, have a go between between my manager and you and, and this, that, and the other. Um, but yes, so working with the lab, it's, it's, it's the same but different. Um, obviously, there are a lot of controls in place. There are a lot of safeguards. There's security. Um, and it's the same as a nuclear power plant, except the difference being instead of generating electricity, they're generating materials wow. for other applications. That's incredible. So with the plutonium in that, if NASA comes to you and says, hey, we're trying to get a rover that's going to last, or, well, I guess maybe not just a rover, but something that's going to go out and to the outside our solar system in that we obviously have to have an energy that's going to last, especially the further away you get solar, you know, isn't as easy. So they could bring you with that problem and you, and would it be a group of people that would work together to like say, hey, we're trying to supply this fuel source, or am I kind of off on where where your guys are headed in that? So, so a little bit, a little bit of the latter. So since it's since it's all federal government, they would work within their own agencies. So so NASA would contact either the the DOE, and then they would say, hey, we're going to be doing this. We need this material for that's going to have this output, whatever. Then they would go to Los Alamos or Savannah River, or one of these other national labs, and say, we need you to produce us this material okay and then and then what we would do was help the lab with any sort of equipment design or new equipment that they might need in order to actually complete that fabrication of that component cool oh that makes so much sense thank you for kind of spelling that out i i love knowing like the specifics of what your job would entail and i think that really paints a great picture I think too, if I oh, don't over talk, forgive me, but you brought up a really cool point that you got into like outer space and astronomy kind of stuff later during your getting your degree. I, I just like to bring up the students. I think when we go in one avenue, sometimes there's ways to follow your passions without specifically majoring in that. So how cool that you get to interact with something you know well and enjoy but it also affects uh, an interest or passion you have, like outer space. I think that's cool how those things can meld sometimes. Yeah, a absolutely. And that one of the things I've always, I always like to tell students that are thinking about, you know, hey, I'm going to college. W what should I go study? I'd say, well, what are you interested in? I would say that, you know, it, it's very difficult at 17, 18 years old when you're applying for schools to decide what am I going to do for the rest of my life. Right. So what I like to oftentimes tell students, especially ones that are STEM or looking to get into engineering, I'd say, think about what interests you now and what, what you might have an interest in in the future and pick something that's going to be, uh, I don't want to say broad, but applicable to many different areas. And engineering does that. Engineering allows you to work into many different industries because uh, I, I did not know as a nuclear engineer, but I would be supporting, um, you know, NASA missions and, and things like that. I, I thought, oh, I'll just be in the power industry because that, at that time, that's what interested me. And I think, if I recall, what, what really sparked my interest in nuclear power was it might have been my freshman or sophomore year of high school, and we had to have a, a, a debate. And it was teams of two, and we're like, well, I don't know. Let's pick nuclear power. Sure, that's, that's a hot topic. 
Right. And it was my team, my, my side, that we, we were chosen, or I don't know if we were selected, but we, were, we decided to be against nuclear power. We're saying it's not good for these reasons, whatever. And it was during that time that I was learning about it, researching. I'm like, hey, what? wait a second. It's not, it's, this is not bad. This is actually really great. It's good for the environment. It's good to help. And admittedly, you know, there have been accidents in the past, but they're few and far between. And as time goes on, technology increases. It, like the technology gets safer and safer. Um, and so anyway, that's what really sparked my interest in nuclear power. And I decided to follow it. Um, I had some friends whose parents were engineers. And I'm like, hey, I'm thinking about doing engineering. W what do you think? And they're like, well, do you enjoy math? I'm like, yep. Do you enjoy science? Do you have an interest in anything that's particular engineering? I'm like, yeah, nuclear power. They said, then you should follow it. Uh, and I did. I'm glad I did. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. And that's a great piece of advice, too, knowing that what we go into, is it something that's broad enough where you can kind of go into different areas? And like you said, engineering, even though you have – Two different jobs in these last few months there's a lot of similarities yeah it sounds like you have a lot of communication a lot of problem solving where you have these set boxes or parameters like i got to solve this problem but you got to fit inside this so i think that's exactly. great exactly and that takes a little bit of creativity and, and creative engineering in order to be able to, to do that uh, yeah, which is great it, it's a good feeling yeah certain price point certain amount of time too that's that's really cool so <laughs> I, you know, you can tell when you talk about it, that's something you're passionate about. And I think that's also a great point when you know what you're creating is, is benefiting the world or your passions in some way. So I thank you. You spelled that out so well for us. So Steve, oh, you're very welcome. You're a very busy man, I know, and we appreciate your time. I don't want to put you too on the spot, but I just want to say if anything off the top of your head for advice for students interested in going into college or any job or career or skills, is there anything you'd just like to mention and say as a, a little tip or point for our uh, future leaders of the world that you wish you would sure. have known? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and a lot of people say it, and it's true. College, university is not for everybody, and that's okay. You, that, that's fine. There are a lot of different career paths you can choose that are rewarding. Uh, a lot of people like to talk about tradesmen, right? Carpenters, electricians, things like that. That's a noble profession. And some people like to say, eh, you don't want to do that. If you have an interest in it, you like hands-on work, follow that. Yeah. If you know that you want to go in one particular lane, like I want to be a teacher. I want to be a, a chemistry and physics teacher. Do that. Follow that. But if you're like, I'm not really sure what I want to do, choose something, if you can, that's somewhat specialty, like engineering, that allows you to work into many different fields. Um, and one last point I'd like to make is, if any of your students have any questions they wanted me to answer, anything specific, even if they don't want to ask in, you know, in front of everybody, that, that's fine. They can get, send them to you. You can send me an email or something, and I'll, I'll get it back to you, and you can get them to them however we want. Oh, thank you, Steve. You've uh, brought up so many great ideas and points, but you've also brought to life the things we've been learning about with fission, nuclear power, defense, of course, and then now even in the world of exploration outside of our planet. So uh, thanks for bringing that to life and highlighting that, and we really value your time. But uh, I think at that point, I'm going to hit the unrecord button and say thank you very much to you, Mr. Steve. And thank you for having me. <laughs>